Hey guys, it's Janice Gaines and I just wanted to give you um, just a heads up. We're about to start doing some cool new things and one of them is I'm going to start doing some mini devotionals here with you in case you want to jump into the word with me. It is when I think about everything that I do from being a mom to being an artist to being a speaker, um, Everything that I do is rooted in what I find in the word and my time with the Lord, because honestly, I think I learned a long time ago that I have nothing. As Sheila Walsh has said before, I'm under catered again, two fish, five loaves of bread and not even like the big loaves. So like um, studying the word is a part of who I am and a part of what makes me tick, because apart from that, I'm a bit of a mess. <laughs> so we're going to start diving into the word together. Let me know what you want to know about. I'll do some study. You can do some study. We can exchange notes. Let me know what you've been confused about. Um, yeah, and we'll dive into the word together. I'm excited to do so. I'm excited to share some things with you that the Lord has been sharing with me. And we'll often just go for my journal. Like I'll study the word in the morning and I'll write down what the Lord is saying. And I'll share that with you as well. Every day I bring my seminary training and I bring the Holy Spirit and I'll be like, look, Lord, show me what you want me to see. Um, so there are times when it will be more comprehensive than others and times when the Lord is just going to hone in on specific things. And so we're just going to jump in together and learn everything. It's an endless treasure. Um, in the word of God. So we're not going to run out of things to say and things to study. So yeah, come join me. Let me know what you want to know and we'll jump in together. So we're going to talk a little bit about a scripture that the Lord showed me a couple days ago while we are in this Rona season at home, social distancing. Um, and it's an old story that um, many of you have probably already heard. Some of you may have not, um, but because of time, I won't read it all. You can follow along. But have you ever heard the story of the golden calf? Okay. It's when Moses was up on the mountain hearing from the Lord, people got tired of waiting. They looked at Aaron and were like, we need you to make us somebody that we can follow after. And basically they take all their jewelry, they melt it down. They make a golden calf so that they can worship it. Moses comes down off the mountain. He's upset. God's mad. Like I'm going to get them. Moses intercedes dot, dot, dot. Anyway, it's in Exodus 32, and I've always thought that this story was strange, that Moses is up on the mountain talking to God, the people are down at the bottom of the mountain, they are waiting for him to come back down. Why would they want to make a golden calf? What is up with that? It just seems so. Anybody ever been like reading a story in the Old Testament like, are they crazy? <laughs> like, what are they doing? That's just the weirdest thing. And so this week I was just like, Lord, you know, this is one of those stories that I grew up on and I'm just trying to figure out what were they actually doing? What were they trying to do? Because I know if they did it as humans, then I'm susceptible to it too. So then it just makes me think, what are they doing? What does it look like now if I were to do that and how can I avoid it? And so Exodus 32, when the people saw that Moses delayed to come down from the mountain, the people gathered themselves together to Aaron and said to him, up, make us gods who shall go before us. So rude. As for this Moses, the man who brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we do not know what has become of him. So Aaron said to them, take off the rings of gold that are in the ears of your wives, your sons and your daughters and bring them to me. So all the people took off the rings of gold that were in their ears and brought them to Aaron. And he received the gold from their hand and fashioned it with a graving tool and made a golden calf. And they said, these are your gods, O Israel, who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. When Aaron saw this, he built an altar before it. And Aaron made proclamation and said, tomorrow shall be a feast to the Lord. And they rose up early the next day and offered burnt offerings and brought peace offerings. And the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. And the Lord said to Moses, go down for your people whom you brought up out of the land of Egypt have corrupted themselves. They have turned aside quickly out of the way that I commanded them. They have made for themselves a golden calf and have worshiped it and sacrificed to it and said, these are your gods, O Israel, who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. And the Lord said to Moses, I have seen these people. 
and behold, it is a, it is a stiff-necked people. Now therefore, let me alone that my wrath may burn hot against them and I may consume them in order that I may make a great nation of you. So the Lord is mad. <laughs> and so I just thought to myself, it just seems really odd that these people who trusted God, God sent Moses to um, speak on their behalf so that they could be free from slavery in Egypt. He let them out of Egypt. He let them out by telling Pharaoh, let my people go. We know the famous phrase over and over again. He wouldn't. And then finally, when all the firstborn in Israel, not in Israel, in Egypt died, except for those with the, uh, the blood of the lamb on the doorpost. Hallelujah. Amen. And then they left. He's like, just get out of here. He really doesn't let them go. He chases them. They're up against the Red Sea with Egypt behind them. Moses lifts up his staff and the Lord parts the Red Sea. They walk through on dry land. Egypt tries to follow them. They get drowned. And these are people like they've experienced miracles in the desert, miracles in the wilderness that God has done. And um, Moses goes up to be with God and commune with God. And then they decide he's been gone too long. And in the waiting, they get upset and they decide they want to make a golden calf. And I just, I have always thought that that is odd. That is crazy. Why the calf? Why a golden calf? Lots of things. And so specifically in this season, I asked God, show me what this is and how it relates to now. And so God took me to Acts 7, 39 through 41, um, where Stephen the very first martyr historically um, is speaking in Acts and he's basically given the whole history of Israel and it's culminating in Jesus and um, the people really get so mad about it that they stone him to death. But Stephen is talking about this story and a part of what he's saying and it's Acts chapter 7 verse 39. It says, our fathers refused to obey him, but thrust him aside. And in their hearts, they turned to Egypt, saying to Aaron, make for us gods who will go before us. As for this Moses, who led us out from the land of Egypt, we do not know what has become of him. And they made a calf in those days and offered a sacrifice to the idol and were rejoicing in the works of their hands. But God turned away and gave them over to worship the host of heaven, as it is written in the book of the prophets. And it goes on to talk about how they got in trouble because of what they actually did. And God highlighted some things for me that Stephen said that really harken back to what the offense was in Exodus and how it connects with what we can do today. And the first thing Stephen says is that they refused to obey. I'm looking at my journal because I was like, writing feverishly. They refused to obey is the first thing they did. They did not acknowledge, um, they did not acknowledge God's authority. They just wanted to do what they wanted to do. Um, then they thrust him aside. Not only did they want to do what they wanted to do, but they engaged in active rebellion against God's authority to lead. So it's one thing to just do what you want to do. It's another thing to know what God says and wants from us and decide, I'm just not going to do it. <laughs> They really cast aside all that comes from his authority. Then it says, in their hearts, they turned to Egypt. And that one really stuck out to me because what they did was they turned to what formerly had them captive. And in this season where we're all home or we're all stuck inside, I really thought, oh, what a dangerous time it could be if we're not careful. And the reality is this. We have to be careful not to turn back to things in this season of captivity, <laughs> feeling like captivity as we're hiding from the coronavirus. Not hiding. We're not hiding. I don't mean to make light of it. But what I do say is since we are at home, there are things that we should not fall back into. Say, you know you weren't supposed to be watching a certain TV show. And now that you're home and you got a lot of time, you like, but well, maybe I should pick back up on that because I have nothing else to do. Or say, um, I don't know, habits, talking to certain people, engaging in conversation with certain people. Maybe it's pornography. I mean, let's just be real. Sitting at home with less to do and the only way to connect is online. Just be careful about who you're connecting with 
and um, just the places that you go online. But that is what they did. They decided they wanted to go back to the captivity of Egypt because Moses was taken too long. He was literally taken too long to them to come back down from the mountain and tell them what God said. And while we're waiting to see what's going to happen, maybe even longer than we expected, be careful about that. Keep your guards up that were up for a good reason. The other thing they did was they said, make for us gods who will go before us. It's like they wanted what God offers without engaging God. It's never going to work. Make sure that you're engaging God to get the things that you want. Don't take this time to be like, and I'm going to craft this bomb plan so that when we do come out of this coronavirus situation, my business is going to shoot off. It's like still engage God in everything that you do. Um, they said, as for Moses, we don't know what's become of him. They started to accuse Moses of being absent, to accuse their leader of being absent. Um, whether that's physically the your pastor or whoever if you're frustrated and you're like I think we should still be gathering in our church service like let's not start grumbling and complaining trust me your pastor has a lot on his heart and a lot on his mind and a lot of decisions to make ultimately let's not grumble and complain against the Lord because that's really what this picture is showing us as well is that they were upset at how long it was taking Who's in charge of all this? Clearly, it's the Lord. And if we're going to be upset, let's make sure that we're not grumbling and complaining against the Lord. Let's see what he actually has to say in this season. The other thing is that they made a calf in those days. They actually sought other things to devote themselves to. Y'all, here's the thing. Not only do we not need to make golden calves, but we've got to fill our time with things that are productive, studying our word, worshiping, um, praying. Like you can decide not to do things, but if you don't fill that time with things that are edifying, then I promise you, you gonna mess around and you gonna eat that brownie even when you weren't trying to. Wait, that's me. <laughs> if you sit around walking around the kitchen talking about, I ain't gonna eat it, I ain't gonna eat it, I ain't gonna eat it, and then you don't eat anything else because you're actually hungry, you're definitely going to eat the brownie because <laughs> that's what I did um, just a little while ago. But anyway, so I'm saying that to say, make sure that instead of cutting things out or avoiding things, you're replacing them. It's some brand new worship songs that just came out on YouTube, like The Blessing by Elevation Worship and Carrie Job and Cody Carnes. It's like, I mean, what's the name of that song? Holy Water Church Sessions with uh, We the Kingdom and Tasha Cobbs Leonard. John Reddick got a song out called Glory and Majesty. <laughs> As my brother. <laughs> I got a song out called Face to Face. <laughs> Sorry, I'm tickling myself because I'm being goofy. But I am also saying, fill your time, fill your home, fill your space with the presence of the Lord through worship, through studying the word, um, through prayer. Teach your kids right now what it means to pour in things that are edifying. I have a, um, a playlist on my Spotify called McDonald's. Because sometimes there are songs that are really, really good. And because I'm a musician, I'm like, I want to understand what they did with that. And I want to hear that again. But I'm fully aware that it's not edifying. And so it's like, as often as you're willing to eat McDonald's, that's how many, that's how often you need to be listening to this. <laughs> and some seasons, you know, I'm willing to eat trash more than others, just being honest. And then you feel the effects of it and have to be like, man, now I got to detox from the foolishness. So let's show our kids what it means to pour in what's really healthy and live a healthy lifestyle. Um, also, the other thing they did was they offered sacrifices to the idol that they had made. Um, they committed their valuables to what they had made. They committed resources. Like, let's just... Let's just not pour into things that God is not doing. Let's not pour into things that don't build the kingdom of God, but kind of build our only our own false kingdom because we actually don't have kingdoms. Everything is the Lord's, the earth and everything that's in it. But sometimes we can work so hard to build, build our own little molehill. And that's really sad because it's only ever going to be a molehill. 
and then it'll come crashing down. So let's just make sure that whatever comes out of this season that we're doing, that we've included the Lord with. And the last thing they did was they were rejoicing in the works of their hands. Not only were they not sorry and repentant, but they were proud of themselves. They were proud of themselves for going against what they knew God was requiring. And I think in this season, that's actually more popular culturally than we'd like to believe. Going against what God says is really, really popular. But the reality is, let's just make sure that we're keeping the main thing the main thing. And the main thing is that God is God. He still has expectations of us in this season, and we still have to keep him at the center of our lives. So in this Rona season, make sure that you're not making idols. Make sure that you're not bringing old captivity back into life and make sure that instead we're pouring in worship and prayer and studying the word, especially in front of our kids, right? Everybody's focusing on homeschool and let them see how you actually study the word. Teach them how to study the word. No shame if they don't know yet. No shame if they haven't seen it yet. Let this be the great blessing and interruption that allows it to happen. And yeah, let me know how you do that in the comments below. All right, y'all, that's it. I get real excited about the word. See you next time.